This ruler killed all his daughters by beheading 16 of them. You need to leave! A ruler you didn't know was so evil until you looked it up. Brace yourselves, because today we're diving headfirst into the chilling, blood-soaked tale of a ruler whose name strikes fear into the hearts of historians and leaves us questioning the depths of human cruelty. Welcome to a journey through the darkest corners of history in our exploration of Ibrahim II of Ifriqiya. To appreciate the horrors of his reign, we must first step into the tumultuous world of 9th century Ifriqiya, a place where power, tyranny, and sadism converged. It's a tale of a dynasty known for its cultural, scientific, and artistic contributions, the Aglabid dynasty. Now picture this, a young, inexperienced ruler ascending to the throne in 875 AD, setting the stage for a reign filled with unspeakable acts of cruelty. But don't think for a moment that Ibrahim's story is confined to his time alone. His actions reverberated through the annals of history, shaping the Maghreb region for years to come. We'll unravel the chilling accounts of executions, impalements, and even cannibalism. You heard that right, an emperor who cooked and ate the heads of his enemies. As we journey through these disturbing events, one question remains. What led this man to become such a sadistic murderer? If you're intrigued by historical narratives that push the boundaries of what we think we know, make sure to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell to stay updated with our explorations. To truly appreciate the significance of Ibrahim II's rule, it's essential to grasp the broader historical context. Ifriqiya, which corresponds to the present-day region of Tunisia and parts of Algeria, was a critical center of the Islamic world during the 9th century. It was under the rule of the Aglabid dynasty, a dynasty known for its cultural, scientific, and artistic contributions. Our story begins in 875 AD when Ibrahim II ascended to the throne, succeeding his father, Muhammad II. At the time, he was a young and inexperienced ruler, which laid the groundwork for the tumultuous events that unfolded during his rule. Ibrahim II of Ifriqiya was a ruler whose reign was marked by political turmoil, conflicts with the Abbasid Caliphate, and shifting policies towards religious minorities. His rule played a significant role in the history of the Maghreb region. In motive and execution, Ibrahim is often compared to Ivan the Terrible of Russia. Following the assassination of the Tulunid Emir Kumarawai in 896, Egypt fell into chaos. In 896 through 97, Ibrahim II led an Afrikian campaign to recover and secure his eastern borders against Tulunid Egypt. Some of the grimmer tales of Ibrahim II's brutality arise from this expedition. Reaching Tripoli, Ibrahim II had the governor Muhammad, his own cousin, executed and impaled, ostensibly because he heard the Abbasid Caliph al-Mudamid had spoken favorably of him. That same year, he attacked and defeated the Ibadit Nafusa at a great battle at Manu, south of Gabes, putting an end to their independent imamate. In the aftermath, Ibrahim II is reported to have set up a throne and ordered the Nafusa prisoners paraded before him one by one so that he could kill each prisoner himself with his lance. He is said to have personally executed 500 prisoners this way before he got tired. At Ajdabia, on the borders of Barca, he is reported to have cooked and eaten the heads of 15 of his enemies. As his emirate expanded, Ibrahim II developed a gruesome reputation not only as a tyrant but also as a sadistic murderer. It is reported that he took pleasure in cruelty and personally carried out executions. Among other horrifying episodes, Ibrahim II allegedly ordered the execution of 300 palace servants merely because a napkin was misplaced during dinner. On hearing accusations of a homosexual encounter among his bodyguards, Ibrahim personally smashed the accused's head in with a mace and ordered a brazier to burn the others alive in his presence. His ruthlessness extended to his own family, where he executed eight brothers and even his own son, Abu al-Aglab, based on vague suspicions. Shockingly, he had some of his wives executed using methods like strangulation, immurement, and dismemberment. He went so far as to order the execution of all his daughters immediately upon birth. When he discovered that 16 of his daughters had survived to adulthood, he held a reception for them, greeted them kindly, and then had them immediately beheaded. When his mother gave him two cultured female slaves, whom she hoped would please him, he sent her a note of thanks accompanied by the girl's severed heads on a tray. Following rumors of a courtly plot to assassinate him and his mother, he had all the pages of the palaces put to death. It's challenging to discern the veracity of these stories, as some might have been fabricated by his numerous enemies. Ibrahim II may have even propagated some tales to instill fear and submission in potential adversaries. However, some historians argue that Ibrahim's brutality was more intentional than insane. His reign can be seen as a deliberate struggle for absolute power, often at the expense of the nobility, the army, the cities, and, to a lesser extent, the tribes. 
elements that pose threats to the monarchy's survival. That will be all for today. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate your time.